Okay. Uh, did we talk about volume last time? No. Okay. Let's let's start with talking about volume. Let's back up a sec. Uh, before we talk about volume, let's talk about area. Tell me what area is. What is it? Yes. No. What is? Listen. Area. What is it? And not what is the formula for it, but what is it? Okay. Yeah. Area is how many squares fit inside of a space. How many squares fit inside of a space? Two-dimensional squares, yes. Okay, so if this rectangle were 5 on this side and 12 on this side, then how many squares do we know could fit inside of that rectangle? 12 would have to multiply them. Why? Because that's how it's done. Nope. Nope. Yes? Well, there are many different ways you could do it. You could, you could, you could just draw lines, you know, five lines and 12 lines, or five spaces. Okay, so this spaces. measures five in this direction. Yep, and then you measure 12 up, and then you can count all the squares, or you could do it easily and just go, okay, so five, there's five there, and there's 12 there, so, why don't we multiply them to see what the number is? Okay, so here we have five what? Squares. 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 How do I know if you multiply that by 12? I don't know if you add it to 12 or divide it by 12 or dumb? Because it's 12 wide and 5 tall. Okay. That sounds like when comes with the Because of the units. This is how we get into trouble <coughs> later on, like when we go to find volume. Okay. Why is it 5 times 12? We're dancing around it. We're getting close to it, but we're not quite saying it. Robert? Base times height. No, oh, we've said that lots of times. That's not it. Why is it 5 times 12? Not because somebody told me base times height and I remembered it real, real good. Why is it base times height? Remember, what is area? How many Perimeter. squares fit inside okay. of space? Can you, can you walk me through it in a little more detail? Because there are 12, 5, like, there are 12 oh. lines. Okay, there's 12. And there are five going down. Okay. So it would be five, 12. Five, well, you can the fives. 12 fives. Two. 12 fives. 12, like, columns yeah. of five squares. Okay. Five rows of 12. Or. Or we could say that we could fit 12 squares this way, and there's room for five twelves. Five rows of 12, 12 columns of five. Same thing? Yeah. Okay? I'm teaching you to think, not just to memorize a formula, all right? So now we thought. That's a good thing. So five times 12 is? Um, 60. 60. There are 60 squares. Squares that fit inside of this rectangle here. Okay. Let's talk about let's talk about a box, a three-dimensional object. Do you have a problem over there? Okay. Good luck. All right, let's look at a three-dimensional object, a box. A box, a box. Okay. Let's say this box, and I'll, I'll draw the little dotted lines here. Is uh, six by four by eight. Okay. Let's talk about some area again. Let's talk about area again. Let's talk about things that we can count up. The area, let's say, of the base. What's the area of the base of this box? Hey, you know what? If you don't understand, a great thing to do is talk to each other and not pay attention. How many squares can fit in the base of this box? The ba by the base, I mean like all that. 24. 24. Six uh, fours, right? Four sixes. So 24. So I'll try and kind of draw 20, 24 squares. Okay. 24 squares along the base. Everybody agree? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, now let's start to look at volume. Like now we're going into the third dimension. If area is measured with squares, could we say that volume could be measured with? Cubes. Cubes. It's 
like a three-dimensional square, right? It's a box that is the same on all sides. All the sides are squares. All the edges are one. They're all the same. Yes? You just, you just said a cube is like a three-dimensional square. It is. A cube is a three-dimensional square, but he said is like. No, squares are two-dimensional. Squares will never be three-dimensional. I know. But in three dimensions, the cube is like a square. It does not a square. It's like a three-dimensional square. A square can't be three-dimensional. Shh. Mm -hmm. Confusing all of us. Okay. So a cube. It's got squares on all sides. Okay. It's uh, all the measurements are the same. The edges are all the same. Okay. So it's like a square, but in three dimensions. How many cubes would you say I could stack up on top? Of of this square down here, Carter? Eight. Why do you say that? Because eight high. Eight high. Tells us that. It's a measurement. Eight high. Okay? So I could stack up eight, eight cubes, right? I can stack up eight cubes on top of that one square. Agreed? Mm -hmm. So on one square, how many cubes can I put? Eight. 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 How many squares are there? A lot. Yeah. 24 times. There's 24. So if there's 24 squares and every one square can hold eight cubes, then how many cubes are there? How'd you get that? Uh, because you 24 by eight. 24 by eight. Every square, every of these 24 squares, which you got by six times four, can hold eight cubes. Right? So six times four times eight is 164. 164? So 192 cubes would fill up completely this box, okay? If previously you thought uh, volume was length times width times height, you're wrong. That's not what it is. That's just how you find it. What is it? Like yes, the amount, the amount of cubes that fit, okay? So when we say that the volume is 192, we're saying it's 192 cubes to fill up that box. Okay, now to number three. Here's this box. It's 11 on this side, 3 on this side, and x tall. So let's start with the volume. What would be an equation that would tell us the volume, Robert? 11 times 3. 11 times 3? 11 times 3 tell us the volume of that no. zero box? 11 times 3 times x. Uh, 11, see, 11 times 3 would tell me what about this box? The bottom the of the box. Just the bottom. The bottom? What about the bottom? It would just how tell how much cubes are on the bottom of the box. No, how many squares how many on the squares bottom of the box? Squares on the bottom of the box, otherwise known as the area. How many squares are on the bottom of the box, otherwise known as the area? So there are those, how many squares? 33 squares, okay? What do we stack on top of each of those squares? X. Cubes. Cubes, right? How many cubes? X, X cubes. So I can stack x cubes on top of this square, on top of this square, on top of this square. How many squares am I going to put x cubes on top of? 33. 33. So 11 times 3, that's how many squares we can fit down there, times x, because that's how many cubes we can stack up on top of all of them. And that works in any order that I want to use. Like if I go back to this guy, if I do 6 times 8, well, that's the area of this front part, this front face. Okay, And then I would multiply by 4 because I can lay four cubes down by each of those 48 squares. So we multiply 11 times 3 times x, we get 33x. All right, now we have to find the area. Out of all the areas of all of the faces of this box. All right, so how are we going to do that? Skinny sign where the nutrition facts are, the area of it would be three times whatever x is. Sure. 
Yeah? Sure, that's the countdown of the squares fit on that side. So 3x, that's the, the skinny side, the nutritional side. Yes? You can find the other parts of the front of the box by 11 times x. 11 times x would give me the front of the box. And x times x. Well, 11 times x would also give me the back of the box, too. Oh, the front and the back. And 11 times 3 would be the top of the box. The bottom of the box. Wait, well, the top, top of the box. The okay, so for they're every... The same area. They're the same area, right? Yeah. There's how many of them? Uh, two. Three. 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 Well, there's Squares, two. Squares, there's two. Yeah, because if the, the bottom and the uh, top, there's no... So you would multiply by two. Congruent, there, exactly. So each one of them, we have each of these things we just did, yeah, oh, plus 33. There's two of each of these things, so multiply each one by two. We could just add it twice, or we could multiply each one of them by two, because that's what that thing is. So let's clean this one up. That's going to be uh, 6x plus 22x plus 66, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which is going to be 28x plus 66 into that. We know how to do it before we started? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Well, all the pieces were in our brain, right? We just didn't know how to put them together. All right. The putting together part is not really a matter of uh, being smart enough or being taught enough. Once they're all there, it's a matter of you putting it all together. Okay? I just helped you put it all together, but you did it. I didn't do it. I just asked the right question. Okay? If all the knowledge is in your brain, be able to ask yourself those questions. What do we know about this box? It says in the, in the directions. We know the special. volume. The volume and the, per, and the surface area are the same. The, the number that you get the volume, the number that you get from the area are the same. So we know that 28x plus 66 is equal to what? 11 times 3 times x. 11 times 3 times x, because that's the volume, and we cleaned that up and made that 33x. Can we solve this, this uh, equation? Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Ooh. I'll give you a, a minute to solve it. 10 more seconds, and then Robert's going to just take it away. Robert, you ready to go? So you would subtract 28x on each side, uh -huh. and then gives you x, or 28 minus 28, those cancel each other out, x by itself. You get x by itself? Just 28 x minus 28 x? Zero. Does that mean x by itself? Is it one x? It's just not what I see. Here, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give Kaden 28 x's. Here you go, Kaden, 28 x's. Then I'm gonna go to Kaden, I'm gonna minus 28 x's. How many x's does Kaden have? Zero. He has none. They completely cancel each other out, right? So there's Zero, so what's left on the left side? 5x. <coughs> x plus 6. On the left side? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing's left on the left side? 5 oh. 66. 66 is there, okay. 33x minus 28x. 5x. 5x. And, okay, Robert, last thing? And I'm going to divide 66 on each side. Divide 66 on each side. How would you divide 66? Wouldn't you divide 5 on each side? Yeah. Why would you do that? Oh. To get x by itself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's try that. Five, five. What's five divided by five? <coughs> one. 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 one times x. Okay, so we have x. 66 divided by five? 13.2. 13.2. And the answer key. All right. Uh, 11? Is it 11? 11. Oh, I had memorized the other one. You want to tell me? Okay, great. Two. Um, parenthesis n. Parenthesis n. Minus three. And uh, plus four and plus one. Plus three. Okay. There's a plus three somewhere? There's four and four. Plus three and no. four. Oh, yeah. Four and yeah, right there. You can settle this whole thing. Is it four and plus one or four and plus three? Right four here. plus one. Okay. All right, so that's what we're doing. And we do what? Distribute. I love distributing, so I'll uh, distribute the 2. 2n two minus 6 equals 4n plus 1. 
Okay. Avery? What's the, the correct answer for number 11? We'll find out as soon as we're done. Who would like to tell us what to do next? Kaden? Um, do minus the 2n. Two 2n, two suggest that we subtract 7. Can we divide on both sides by 2? We certainly can, but I like to leave the dividing until the very last thing, okay? Until it is ends on one side, number on the other side, and divide, okay? Just to make it easy. So negative 7 equals 2n. Divide by 2. Now, I just made it easier for myself. So negative 7 halves. and continue with the homework, which we will turn in in about uh, 12 minutes, okay? We'll take a check the answers, take some questions. 